Traditional Māori kākahu. They're at the heart of who we are, worn as a mantle of prestige and honour, dating back centuries. You can see the differences in the making and what's imbued in them. They have their own uh, patterns of endurance. They've gone through an era and a lifetime. You know, and the fact that we still have them is wonderful. Dr Kahutoi Te Kanawa comes from a long line of highly respected weavers. She's the daughter of Digeris Te Kanawa and granddaughter of Dame Rangi Marie Hete, two of New Zealand's most prestigious Māori weavers. There was always a kākahu being made with haraki, nothing else, no mop cloth. Everything was done from the harakeke. And what we have to remember is that if we don't use the, the, our natural materials, like the harakeke, mm -hmm. then you lose the skills. And then lies the difference. And that's where a conflict is emerging. How some contemporary kākahu are being made and incorrectly named. Like this one here, gifted to Australian golfer Zach Murray, when he won the New Zealand Open. The cloak was criticised, described as a chunk of faux fur, topped with rooster feathers. There was also the time Jacinda Ardern attended a dinner with the Queen, wearing what was described as a korowai, when in fact it was a kahuhuruhuru. A kākahu is an overall word for clothing in Māori, but a korowai is a specific type of cloak, and it's a tagged one. Some of these faux fur cloaks, they call it a contemporary kōrawai. Well, first of all, it's contemporary, but it's not a kōrawai. The richness imbued in the making of kākahu or kōrawai is the skills and the knowledge that's been passed down. That's where the richness is. But when you commodify our taonga to become just a, a, like a faux fur cloak, it really minimises those skills and knowledge. It, that is offensive and insulting. Kahu Toi is a Pauwarahi curator at the Auckland Museum and kaitiaki of these taonga. She's committed to keeping traditions alive. What are the types of kākahu? Kahu kuri, and then you have the kaitaka class, which are the very fine wo woven cloaks. Kahu kura, like it's a red cloak. Mm. Kahu huruhuru, with lots of feathers. Kahu kiwi, cloak with kiwi feathers. Kahu kereru. This mahi is labour intensive. It can take up to a year to produce just one kākahu from harakeke. Once the fibre is, is extracted, it's put into rolled, into, or what we call a middle, rolled in lengths. You need about the good thousand fenu to make one cloak. There's no comparison, though, to making a kōrawai or kahuhuruhuru to having some done on faux fur or whipped up on a machine. There's just, you cannot compare it. Even so, the fact is most whānau can't afford a bespoke kākahu made traditionally. And that's where Hedia Aurangi has stepped in. I am the owner, designer and founder of Kōrawai by Hedia. And I design kākahu by myself as a way of access to, particularly to Māori, to help them to stand in their mana when they're achieving things or they're celebrating milestones. So I'm simply here to, to help those whānau that are looking for that kind of um, taonga to add to their family. Hedia had a strong motivation to start making kākahu. It was deeply personal. Five years ago, my dad turned 70. He went to go and get himself a kōrawai and the lady said no. So she was the judge on that day, telling my dad that he wasn't worthy enough. I thought, who the hell are you? <laughs> and so there were all these tiny little seeds that my whānau directly weren't being able to stand in their mana. So I started purely on the fact that my whānau were looking for this. Hedia makes her kākahu using machines. It takes up to a day to make one, 
and already she's making a splash in high-end fashion magazines. You've been asked to dress someone for the Emmys next year, is that right? Yes. Who are you dressing? It is a musician. Oh. Uh, it is an American musician. Wow. She is of African-American descent. Um, and so I, it might not make the, the final cut, mm -hmm. um, but the opportunities through Vogue and Vanity Fair, I'm now on a bit of a, what do you call it, black book mm -hmm. of designers. Making kākahu with a sewing machine yeah. has been criticised. What what's your whakaaro? I still think that there's integrity in what I do, but that's just me personally. Like, welcome to my factory. It's me with my two hands and my machine. I'm not bulk manufacturing offshore, having my, my care label saying, i hanga ki haina. You know, my care label say, Māori made in Aotearoa. And when you look at technology, you look at tattoo artists. You know, why are they allowed to use um, modern machinery? And I'm not. Calling a business korowai and selling a product that a lot of people don't actually know is in, not a korowai, could that be contributing to the misconception of what a korowai is? I would 100% agree that that's, that would be the issue. Mm. Could be wrong, but I'm gonna lean in and go, no. Um, and then I also think that, well, Subway sandwiches, are they selling Subway? You know, tank smoothies, are they selling tank? What's the origin of Coca-Cola? It was trying to find the right um, ingwa, I suppose. And I got Māori consultants and a Māori business who I love, still love and trust. And they said, Hedia, stand in your manner about it. I was like, right. Hedia says the use of the word korowai in her business name refers to her being a korowai or support person for others. She knows the importance of correctly naming kākahu and lists them on her website. But she's still being asked to rebrand and change the name. If it does happen, I'll be a bit sad about it because that ahu of being a korowai in that safe space, I feel that people may, the ones that felt that aroha around it will, will also feel like, hmm, she was the korowai to me. She did help me to learn. She did help me to feel safe. She was the one that informed me around tikanga, around that. I don't even have $10,000 or $15,000 to pay a weaver. My invitation is to those that want to say something negative, sit with me, have a cup of tea, let's weave together. You know, like I, I wish Māori would be more supportive. The cost of having a traditionally made kākahu is in the thousands. So was it okay for people to go to the next best thing? Well, as long as they know what they're paying for, as long as they understand that it's actually not a korowai, it's a cloak or it's a cape, mm. but it's not a korowai. It's complicated. Kahu Toy is committed to the survival of traditional knowledge. All she's asking is that people know and respect the difference between a traditional kākahu and a korowai inspired cloak. I have a concern about a lot of traditions that are being lost, uh, but we're trying to do our best as a whānau. But we also have a, a um, national weavers committee called Te Rūpūraranga Whatu o Aotearoa, mm -hmm. where we have a lot of emerging weavers that are coming up that are, are learning the traditional ways and methods. So um, we're doing it anyway, mm. yeah.